was 40 hours, 40 minutes. John Coucher is a man who loves sound, especially old sound. It fleshes out what's on the, the written record and gives it a, a bit of life and colour and some of the stories that are told, uh, the sort of yarns that wouldn't go down in the history book. Inside the Sound and Vision Unit in Christchurch, it's John's job to preserve some of the country's oldest records. It's, it's great stuff and uh, we're un unique uh, around the world as a country with a collection like this. Not many other countries have this kind of material from this period. This archive is home to more than 70,000 sound bites. It includes the New Zealand Oral History Collection, a group of records so important that they've been listed as one of three new additions to the UNESCO Memory of the World, New Zealand Register of Documentary Heritage. It's a fantastic recognition of this wonderful collection that we have here in Christchurch, the Oral History Collection. The UNESCO Memory of the World program started in 1992 as a way to promote and preserve the world's heritage. Over 60 countries, including New Zealand, now take part. Around 300 items are included on the International Register, including the 1840 Treaty of Waitangi. This collection is an important addition. It's, we think, one of the earliest oral recordings in the world. It records voices from the 1940s and records memories that go right back to the 1850s. So indeed I think it's an important archive for New Zealand and indeed you know, for everyone in the world. The special collection was formed between 1946 and 1948. It includes broadcast oral histories recorded around regional New Zealand after the Second World War by the New Zealand Broadcasting Services Mobile Unit. Some of the material includes memories from as far back as the 1850s. It's some of the earliest speech on record, um, New Zealand English speech on record. It's used quite extensively for linguistic study at Canterbury University. The oral history collection is vast. There are around 900 discs and 300 speakers on record. It's John's job to clean and restore the fragile and important records of New Zealand's oral history. The collection includes memories of the Taranaki Wars, aspects of Māori culture, the origin of the frozen meat trade. It also includes accounts of the first bicycle, which frightened horses, and the coming of electric power. This interview with a local from Akaroa about his life story is one of hundreds of interviews included in the collection. I was, I was born in Akaroa in 1860, and father came to New Zealand in the monarch, the bark, in 1850. He was being interviewed in 1947-48 period and um, you know that we we can hear somebody talking about life in the 1860s in, in Canterbury is amazing. Of course we don't sound the same as we did when this was first recorded. Yes you can hear the uh, the UK uh, accents in there a lot more and often these people are um, they're either first generation New Zealanders or they were actually born overseas so they've got an accent that's different from how we speak Kiwi today. The archive was nearly lost when the earthquakes of 2010 and 2011 hit but it has managed to be salvaged and now sits in this warehouse a hoard of precious irreplaceable material including this interview excerpt from the 1953 London to Christchurch air race, spanning nearly 20,000 kilometres from London Heathrow to Christchurch International Airport. Captain Bailey, I imagine you are as pleased with yourself as you have every right to be, sir. Well, I'm more than pleased to be here, I must say. And it's very nice to stand here and just look at the airplane without having to run round it and jump into it again. <laughs> the Sound and Vision unit is now focusing on transferring the original discs to a digital archive to help researchers around the country. It hopes to move to a new permanent building within the next few years with a purpose-built archive to store this vast collection of sound. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News.